Ah. Let's see if she's okay. What's this book over here? Nothing. Morinth haunted my dreams and waking hours equally. For the first time in 400 years, I am free. I am a ruined vessel of sorrow and regret, but I am free. It is not a feeling I can describe. Was it worth it? It was never a question of worth, but of need. I had to take the action I did, as did she. This was never a story that would have a happy outcome. You said that Morinth was a monster, but she was still your daughter. She was the strongest and smartest. She would not accept the injustice thrust upon her. She fought to the end. I am so proud of her, Shepard. Isn't that hypocritical? I don't think that's quite the question that we should be asking at this moment of time. You did your duty. What about your feelings? One of my daughters is dead. My hopes, my dreams were all bound up in my children. Still, my feelings have always come after my duty. The same is true of you. Mm, in certain respects, yes. What will you do now that Morath is gone? Assuming I survive your mission, I am a Justicar. Injustice still exists. And perhaps even other Ardat Yakshi. I thought Ardat Yakshi were extremely rare. Asari have spread to many worlds. There are remote regions with no government oversight. If I travel to those worlds and they do exist, I will find them. There's no way to correct the condition Morinth had? We are an advanced species, but we don't have magic. When the trait manifests at maturity, it is too late for mitigation. It only occurs in purebloods like myself. Perhaps that is the root of the stigma regarding Asari exclusive pairings. I don't know. You don't want to settle down? I did. I returned to my homeworld and tried to start a family. I will fight and struggle all my life. That is my fate. When I die, it will not be in bed. I am at peace with that. You still control the direction of your life. I have chosen this path. I truly am at peace. Due in no small part to you. Okay. Little bit of feeling sorry for yourself, really. But anyway, <coughs> she's got her duties and she will carry on as she carries on, I suppose. Nothing we can say will change that. Uh, let's just have a quick chat with Kasumi. I was just thinking about you. It must have been really hard for Samara to ask you to help kill her own daughter. She told me she really appreciated your help. As hardcore as she is, I'm not sure she could have done it without you. Thanks, Kazumi. Thank you very much for your pearls of wisdom. Let's go speak with Faye and see if uh, he was w he's willing to, uh, to uh, <coughs> divulge some more information about his past. Do you need something? Have a few minutes to talk. Very well. I am. I had been recording a message for Kolyat. How are things going with him? It is difficult. All things worth keeping are. I never explained. I suppose the story of my wife's death took you by surprise. Ah, this could be the moment that we may have been hinting at last time. I figured you'd explain to me when you were ready. I appreciate your patience. I kept my work clear of our home life. I assumed that would be enough to protect Erika. That memory I mentioned before. Laser cut trembles on the target's skull. The smell of spice on the spring wind. Lisa, eyes defiant in the scope. That was Erika. Ah. That was how I met her. Thought so. She saw my targeting laser as she walked by and threw herself in the way. I guess she impressed you. She woke me up. Her body trembles, not fear. Indignation. Her mouth moves. How dare you? You and I train to sacrifice ourselves to save others. How often does a civilian step in the way of a bullet to protect someone they've never met? I thought she was the goddess Hirashu. She met my eyes through the scope, and my purpose faltered. 
So how did she go from blocking your shot to having your children? I had to meet her. The memory possessed and endowed me. I fell on my knees before her, begged her pardon. She introduced me to the world beyond my work. Eventually, she forgave me. Later, she loved me. When you talked to Cole yet, you said she died. I let myself become complacent. I thought Erika and Kolyat were safe. I stayed away too long, and my enemies came for her. Who came for her? Batarians. A slaver ring that was preying on Hanar out her colonies. I'd killed their leaders. They paid the Shadow Broker to find out who I was. But they were afraid of me. So they went after her. You told Kolyat that you hunted her killers down. Erika woke me up. When she passed, I returned to my battle sleep. My body hunted her killers, murdered them. I was taught to grant death quickly, cleanly, to minimize suffering. Them, I let them linger. You were operating on instinct. By your own rules, you can't blame yourself. But I made the choice to hunt them. They're the only lives I've ever taken of my own choice. The only deaths on my own conscience. The worst thing is to face death with regrets. You're part of my crew, and I consider you a friend. If there's anything I can help you with, just ask. I've never been part of a team. Assassins tend to be solitary. I'm learning the virtues of facing death with others at your side. It's a work in progress. There we go. A little bit more information about Thane's past and personal life. He's opening up slowly but surely. Right, I think uh, we're going to go and speak with uh, Tally, uh, probably Grunt as well, and then Zaid. That leaves us with Jack and Jacob, who we can't speak to because we still need to do their loyalty missions. Starting with... Mr. Zaid! Back for another lesson? Yes, why don't you teach me? I've done a lot of crazy things, but I never tried to take on a thresher more on foot before. Standard operating procedure when you get a thresher more is run the hell away. Pick up sticks, move the hell out. Krogan don't know any better, I guess. Still, hell of a fight. <laughs> Sounds like he enjoyed it. Was he there? I think it was Garrison Grunt, wasn't it? Maybe he watched from afar. <laughs> Place bets on who would win. Shepard, what can I do for you? Have you got time to talk? Uh, sure. Uh, let me just come on, you little bullshit! Oh, sorry. I've got a small fever and I'm taking it out on the poor drive core. Don't worry, it's nothing serious. Got sloppy while doing some suit repair. I never understood how you get sick from non quarian germs. We don't, really. Turian germs are the only ones with any chance of affecting us, since we share amino acid chirality with them. What we experience is actually an acute allergic reaction. How did you get sick this time? I took some fire in a fight back on the Alarai. Nothing serious, but I needed to open my suit <clears throat> to check the wound. I disinfected properly, but one of the section seals had taken some damage, and foreign matter got out of the disinfected zone. It was a stupid mistake. You always check your seals before doing local treatment. Unless you forget. Then you get a damn fever. <sighs> well... How exactly does the sickness work? It's an allergic reaction? Right. Say I get exposed to a human disease, like... What did Navigator Presley have that time? Chickenpox? I wouldn't get chickenpox. But I'd run a fever as my system reacted to the foreign presence. Depending on where it hits me, I could get other symptoms. Nausea, vomiting, everything you'd expect from being sick. I don't know if I could live inside a suit my whole life. We are in our suits even among family. The most intimate thing we can do with another Quarian is link our suit environments. We get sick at first and then we adapt. 
It's our most important gesture of trust, of acceptance. I haven't trusted anyone enough for that, though, except, well, no quarians. Um, you know what I mean. I appreciate the thought, Tally, and I feel the same way. But you don't have to prove anything to me. I know. Well, not that, that I know, but I, I didn't mean it like that. It's a, um, wow, it's really hot in here. <laughs> it's just that the tradition also signifies a willingness for, um, intimacy. I wasn't trying to... It's not always like that. It's more... Um, how did we even end up talking about this? Oh, here we go. <laughs> oh, no. Obviously we're not interested, really, because of the fact that it's Liara that we, we are loyal to. And I don't want to be... I don't want to be rude, though, about it. I'm just question. Wait a minute. It sounds like you're suggesting something, Tally. What could I possibly be suggesting? I mean, a young woman gets rescued by a dashing commander who lets her join his crew and then goes off to save the galaxy? How could she possibly develop any kind of interest in him? Oh, here we go. Okay, we, this didn't really work. It was He's merely toying with her now. It's too dangerous. It sounds right. I think the best policy is honesty. Isn't that what they say? Tally, that's really sweet, but I don't feel that way about you. I'm <gasps> sorry. Oh, God, Shepard. Right, right, of course not. But why would you? It was just something I meant hypothetically, talking about immune systems and air filters and such. I'm going to tinker a bit more. Thanks for coming by. Oh, man. <laughs> Awkward moment there. Oh, poor Tally. But it's true. I mean, maybe if uh, if Shepard wasn't, you know, in a relationship with Liara, you know, it might, might be a possibility. But uh, as I say, Shepard is a loyal man. Hates dishonesty, and he would wouldn't do such a thing. Shepard, just checking in. How you doing? <laughs> I was just. <laughs> Sitting here thinking. The picture. I'm finally starting to get it. There's a tank imprint. The battle at Canrum. A dead Turian. Stripped. You don't see them out of their armor much. A Krogan boot on his head. And a claw hammer. It's under the brow plate. Pulling it back, right? Eyes have gone black. And you see tension in the muscle. You can feel it ready to snap. I get it. Canrum isn't ringing a bell. Death of Shiagar, female warlord. Turians killed her, so they were hunted down and made examples. Even if they won the war, it was the last push before the rebellions ended. Maybe I had to be there, but I don't get the joke. There's no joke. It's just great. It's a Turian, and he's being torn apart for what they did. I felt nothing before, but now I get it was a good fight. The enemy was destroyed to punish them all and send a message. I get it. I hate Turians. I thought you'd be glad. Uh, <coughs> yeah, we have a Turian on board. I don't know if I'll be coming down here for these talks anymore. Whatever. Don't have to be friends to fight good enemies. Just thought you'd like to know I'm finding reasons for my own battles. Okay, well, it, uh, hates Turians. Well, we, <laughs> maybe not to pair him with Garrus anytime soon. Well, I think we're done talking with everybody that we can possibly talk with. So, back to CIC, and a new mission awaits. So, we are going to head to Praja to assist Jack next. And poor old Jacob is going to be last on my list. Where are we going now? Are we Are going to help? Jack, all the way over in the Nubian Expanse. And 
here we are in a new system. All right, just have to get my uh, my dinner. Okay. So as we go into a new system, a little bit of planetary exploration, starting with Zenitra. Nothing uh, at all interesting about it. Moving on, Alconost, the standard ice giant with methane ammonia atmosphere. It has an unusually strong magnetic field, which is occasionally useful when ships need to discharge their drives. Banik, large super terrestrial hot house with a crushing carbon dioxide atmosphere. High average density of over 7 grams per cubic centimeter indicates that Bannock is a mineralogical treasure trove. If only there were some way to safely reach its seas of molten metal and loads of radioactives. The planet's mass is so great that trace amounts of helium and molecular hydrogen can be found in the atmosphere. And we have Gamma Yun. Gamma Yun is a hydrogen helium gas giant with six large icy moons. The outermost, Gigula, is of note for a well preserved wreckage of an ancient starship that was recovered by a Terrian military surveyor. Little information has been released to the public on the vessel, aside from a scholarly paper regarding how the internal layout suggests a horizontally oriented race. And finally, Praja. The jungle planet Praja is overrun by choking hypergrowth caused by industri industrially mutated plant species. This, combined with its relative isolation and lack of population, has made Praja an occasional base of operations for drug runners, weapon smugglers, pirates, mercenaries, terrorists and intelligence agents seeking secrecy. Sustained habitation on Praja is extremely difficult, where mutant and even poisonous plant life can overgrow colonies in days instead of years. Sounds a rather dangerous place to be. So naturally, we're going to land there. <laughs> so we have a boatload of loyal team members. I'm going to go with Thane and Jack. In fact, no, I'm going to go with Morden and Jack. I think Modern has a decent amount, uh, it's just because Modern has a decent setup of powers. He has uh, a power that's good for getting down barriers, a, a power that's good for getting down shields, so he's got a bit of, uh, vi what's the word, variation, a bit of, I uh, can't think of the word. Anyway, you know what, I, uh, whatever. Good, right. I'm going to have a change of weapon for Shepard. Um, uh, I was thinking about this shotgun. It's a heavy shotgun, it's very good, it's, but it's very slow to reload and more than once I've found myself getting into trouble. So what I'm going to do is maybe have a try. Uh, this one for a J. I don't know where. Shall I? Yeah, a little bit different. The locust, the hand cannon, the particle beam, that's about right. Hand cannon, Shimatara sh shotgun, locust, and hand cannon. I forgot how much I hate this place. See the landing pad? Has to be on the roof, or the vegetation would overgrow it in a few hours. Shepard, I am picking up thermal signatures everywhere, except at your landing zone. Something's distorting the sensors. Of course. Thermal shielding. Standard for Cerberus facilities. Yeah. They build their equipment to last. Assholes. It was a mistake coming back here, Shepard. Get a hold of yourself. It'll be okay. I'm fine. Okay. Nope. Let's stand by. 